Ace Wildlife and Pest Control is an Oakville-based company and lately has been receiving a lot of online attention due to a couple new members of the team. Owner-operator Nathaniel Heppel is here to introduce and explain. So welcome, Nathaniel. Who is, who is here with you? Hi, Jason. We've got uh, two little orphaned raccoon kitties. Uh, this is this fellow's name is Squish, and this is Splooter. All right. Now, I know they're not actually part of the pest control team, but tell me the story. How did these guys end up with you? Well, my job is to get them out of people's properties, particularly structures. They were in somebody's house. Uh, the client was hearing noises in their attic. And when they called me, uh, we did an inspection, and inside the attic, uh, there was a deceased raccoon. And these are her children. Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, I don't know much about raccoons, but I do know the more time they spend with you, it's actually the worse off for them because they lose their fear of humans. So how does this work now? I know you want to get them back, you know, into the wild yes. somehow, but what are the next steps? Well, as cute as they are, I want to assure you, I don't want to be looking after them. My children are older. I don't need new babies. Uh, so the next step for these guys is to get them to a licensed rehabilitation center. So there are people who do have official status to be able to look after them, and they know exactly how to do it to get them back into the wild and revert back to their wild state. The problem at this time of year is that orphans become a little too common, and these facilities have a limited capacity. There's uh, not very many local facilities. We have one in Grimsby, we have Toronto Wildlife Center, and they're absolutely full. They can't take these guys. So for uh, the last few days, I've been calling, begging, pleading, putting as much pressure as I can on these facilities and looking to the public for leads about who might have a license to get these guys the best care possible because I do like them and they seem to think I'm their dad, but I am not the best caregiver for them. So what have you come into then, Nathaniel? Like, what is the process here? Because, you know, you mentioned you're having a hard time. They've already been with you for five days. Someone like yourself is well connected to the industry. There'd be no one that would have better leads than you. And even you're having trouble. Why is that? Exactly. So one of the things that uh, we are trying to do, I'm working with a couple of rehabilitation centers now, that working with them doesn't mean that they have space. It means that uh, they're certainly interested in helping as many raccoons as possible, but there's limitations to that. And we're starting to try to come together and get some proper education to everybody. You know, the people in Halton here, they're good people. And I know that you have every right to keep these guys out of your attic, but I think that we're due a little responsibility to care and manage these situations uh, with a bit of heart. The, we are marked much more powerful than they are, and we have the opportunity to help and the capacity to do so. So that's my take on it. I'm going to do what I can for them, and I'll ask the residents to, to do the same. Uh, we can ask our other people if we can open a facility in every region. That would be ideal just to manage the raccoons that come on our own on our own paths that we need to look after. Now, you know, just for you working in the industry, for people who may see an occurrence like this, who may see babies around their property or mm -hmm. even, you know, in their homes, what would you recommend? Like what action should people take? Um, seeing an animal outside during the day at this time of year doesn't constitute an emergency or a problem necessarily. If you're concerned, you can just keep an eye on them for a little while. Certainly call somebody like me or Animal Control Humane Society for guidance. Um, but uh, that's all you need to do. There's not uh, a lot uh, to be done. These mothers are great. They do want them back. If you see babies in one spot for two days in a row in the same spot, that's a concern. But uh, most of the time, they're okay. Well, you, sir, do seem to be like quite the gentle giant and dad at the moment for these guys, foster dad. But it's great that you found a place and hopefully they will find themselves a nice new home. I'm, I'm absolutely confident of that. But yeah, if you want to help me come and feed them, Jason, <laughs> come on over. I'm going to take a pass. I'm going to tell you, I'm not good with wildlife, my friend. That's your gig. I'm going to stay on this side of the camera. We've got Zoom in between us right now. It's basically a kitten. You can do it. <laughs>